Metro New York City chapter. And um, I'm pleased to have Barclay Blair, the President and Executive Director of the Information Governance Initiative, which is the premier information governance uh, uh, umbrella body uh, in our industry right now. Um, the IGI is uh, on the verge of releasing their second annual report, and um, I'd like to ask Barkley a few questions about that. Morning, Welcome. Brian. Ha happy to be here with you. Excellent. So um, I guess the first question that our members will want to know, and most everyone else will want to know, is how is this uh, second report different than the first? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, so last year was the first year that we did this, and, and I think our goal last year, and it was the first year that the IGI was in existence, and, and our goal was to put some stakes in the sand or perhaps in the bedrock around information governance because one of the problems certainly that we've been trying to solve at the IGI or, uh, or, or try to address at least is this you know, confusion maybe around what information governance is and how it's defined and what its dimensions are. So that was a big focus for us in the first year in our, our first annual report. So we asked uh, our community a number of questions uh, around the concept of information governance and came out with, as a result of that, a definition that had, you know, the support of 90 or over 90 percent of our community. And so, so that was, I think, a big goal for last year, and we've seen that now, that concept and that definition really been taken out by uh, the community at large. Our, our focus for this year was slightly different. We thought, okay, now we've sort of, you know, uh, uh, put some of that definitional stuff in place, Let's now respond to the to the biggest single request we get from our community is, well, you know, tell us what other people are doing, or, or let's 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 uh, now dig into uh, what the work of information governance actually is, right. and I think what what the market of for information governance is, and is there a market, and and what are its pieces and components? So that was that we don't spend a lot of time this year on the definitional piece, but rather we we spend a lot of time digging into uh, what projects are people doing and how much money are they spending and, and what are the components of those things and what are the highest priorities and I think a lot of information which is going to be incredibly valuable for those practitioners out there who are you know, rolling their sleeves up and, and going to work on information governance. Right. right. So interesting, um, are you seeing a difference uh, or is there a convergence between uh, what practitioners think their project should be and what providers think their project should be? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, one of the one of the things that I that I decided to do with this right from the beginning, and we did it last year as well, is that um, you know I think that in any emerging market, there's always this question, <coughs> which is, well, you know, who, wh where is this idea coming from, or or you know, information governance in the last year or two certainly has been you know, very hyped in, uh, you can see evidence of it at conferences and that sort of thing. And so I think there's always this question, well, you know, are people actually doing it or is it just the vendors kind of trying to foist, you know, yet another concept uh, on us? So I was very curious about that. And last year and this year, I was actually shocked by the results that we got, which is uh, across almost every variable, there's very, very close alignment between uh, the buyers and sellers in this space, the, the providers of products and services and the people who are actually purchasing them and using them. You know, if we look at, you, you, you can see in the charts um, and the infographics that uh, we, we report out on that. We report on what are the perceptions uh, of pr practitioners versus providers and things like, you know, what projects are important, what projects are they doing, uh, where are they focusing? Who are they putting in charge? There's almost, you know, uh, a, a, a almost complete alignment uh, between those communities. The, the one thing that we, we found that was quite interesting where there wasn't alignment was, um, you know, both uh, the buyers and the sellers, if you will, told us that quantifying the, the, the financial impact of IG or building a business case was really important uh, to them, but what was interesting was that the, the practitioners, the buyers, if you will, um, only about a third of them said that they were actually using those models and making a decision about what to buy, whereas, you know, almost all of the providers said that they were required to uh, create them as part of the selling process. So I thought that was interesting that maybe there's some 
hoop jumping going on here that's part of the sales process, but ultimately maybe the decision has already been made or maybe the decision is being made you know, across a range of complex variables, you know, cost or, or the business case being just one of them. Right. So, and, and that's, that's, that's fascinating. Another one of the, uh, the, the, I think, the important things that the IGI has really focused on in the past, uh, over the past year, um, was, or is the creation of this, uh, this new Chief Information Governance Officer role. Right. Um, how is that, uh, you know, expanded upon uh, in, this, uh, in this second annual report? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, you know, and it's it's a it's a topic near and dear to my heart, you know, and we've had this conversation many times, Bryn, that, you know, I think in some ways the sum total of what I've learned after, you know, 15 years of being a consultant in this space is that, you know, in, unless you have a, a senior enough executive with enough authority in charge of this problem, it's really impossible to solve. You can certainly make incremental improvements and chip around the edges, but, so, so, you know, what I came to is this belief that there, there was and there is and continues to be nobody at the sea level who actually is responsible for information itself. You know, we have the CIO, uh, despite the title chief information officer, and most organizations is actually a chief infrastructure officer. In other words, he or she doesn't actually own the information, but, but the pipes and wires that the information flows over. So... So we've taken on this this uh, mission, I suppose, to advocate for the creation of a, a new C-level role called the Chief Information Governance Officer. And you know, is it something that we believe every organization needs? Or uh, no, certainly not. Do we believe it's going to happen overnight? No. Do we even believe that most organizations are going to have this role? <coughs> well, we'll see. I think uh, you know we would be equally happy with the result that. Uh, some other existing C-level role actually steps up and says, no, the information itself is my problem and I'm going to own that. But what's interesting is, you know, so we, we asked um, folks in our annual report, you know, do you think this is a role that's necessary? Do you think it's a role that uh, is going to help solve this problem? The vast majority agree. So there is support out there for this role. We, we, we've, this role has been created. Uh, at some of the companies that we work with, it's it's out there. We see, you know, we've talked to a lot of people on the kind of the staffing and recruiting business. They're they're supportive of the role. They think the biggest challenge with with it is actually just identifying and finding qualified candidates. It's it's a very challenging position that we envision. We're going to later this year in a month or two uh, articulate that the details of this position really. Uh, at a huge level of detail with our Seagull playbook, which will be a complete, you know, description of the role and uh, where people will come from to fill that role, what they should get paid, what the reporting relationships are, and so on. So you'll see more from us on this. But I was really heartened to see that, you know, the community uh, is really supportive of the role, and I think that bodes well. That's really that's really important. Um, and speaking of the community. Um, what, uh, what's the IGI's role going to be at the upcoming uh, ARM International Conference? Yeah, good question. Um, so we are doing a pre-conference boot camp. Uh, this is a day-long program that we've run uh, across the country, and it's, it's been very successful, I think, and highly regarded. We put, uh, you know, 30 people in a room, and we do a heavily facilitated workshop-style program designed to give folks the fundamentals they need to uh, get cracking on their information governance program. We teach them project planning methodologies. We teach them how to build a steering committee and the, the pitfalls and so on. So we're doing that on a Sunday. Uh, you know, Jason Barron from our executive team is speaking several times throughout the event, uh, as am I. And then I, I'm doing something really fun at the at the end, the closing uh, keynote panel, which is we're going to hear from. Uh, four senior IG professionals, I think including uh, two from your chapter, Bryn, uh, they're going to do a, a Pecha Kucha presentation, a seven-minute presentation on their career, um, how they got, got to, to where they are and sort of what they've learned. And we're going to talk about um, how that uh, career uh, trajectory might lead to the Chief Information Governance Officer as kind of a terminal role or an ultimate goal for uh, an IG professional, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be mimosas served, apparently, so that should that should help. 
<laughs> always, always an enticement with uh, <laughs> members of Armour Metro New York City. Right. <laughs> well, Barkley, thank you so much for this. This has been really, uh, you know, that you, you shone a very, uh, a very bright and important light on this, uh, uh, on this issue and, and on this topic. And uh, we, you know, certainly appreciate your ongoing efforts and look forward to, uh, you know, to a lot more from the IG. In this well, thanks, Brandon. You know, we I personally really appreciate your support, the support of Arma Metro. It's a great group. It's a it's a great chapter. Um, we've done lots of fun stuff together, um, and uh, yeah. So you know, look, your your members can look for the report. We're gonna we're gonna publish and release the report officially uh, on the 29th of September on the the opening day of our InfoGovCon conference up in Hartford, which runs the 29th. Uh, the 30th and the 1st, so uh, if you haven't got your ticket, uh, uh, go and get it, and we hope to see you there. Excellent. You will. <laughs> Thank you much. Thank you. Take care.